Hi, in this tutorial I'll be introducing essential techniques to optimize both RAM and VRAM usage. You've probably encountered issues like maxing out your RAM or Blender running out of VRAM. We'll fix this problem. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Before we begin, let me introduce our Asset Distro website, where you can explore a variety of free and premium assets. We offer high-quality game-ready assets and also Blender projects, all of which you are free to use in any of your projects. So be sure to check out our store at store.blackcave.com. I have a senior that caused a memory issue, consuming 32 gigabit of RAM. I have a fairly simple shader here and I'm using Udemy. If you want to learn about Udemy, you can watch the tutorial here. The primary issue lies in the texture size and bit depth. For instance, this particular texture is 4K. It produces good results for me, but how can I specify the resolution and bit depth? First, let's discuss this in Substance Painter, which is the most powerful texturing software available. As you can see, I have selected a 4K resolution, which is sufficient for my project. Next, let's open the file and select Export Textures. In this window, you will be able to specify the resolution. If you are using multi-tile textures or UDEM, it's best to select 4K or lower, as 8K can be quite heavy. The next is Bit Depth. While higher values can enhance quality slightly and significantly increase resource usage. In most cases, choose 8 bits, as this provides sufficient quality for high-quality textures. This setup has been applied across all my layers and materials. Now let's go over this configuration in Photoshop. You might want to modify your textures using Photoshop. Once your texture is open, navigate to the image menu and choose image size. In this window, you can set the resolution, such as 2048. Keep in mind that in most cases, textures are square. Alternatively, you can enter a number in the resolution. To change the bit depth, Navigate to the image menu, select mode, and then choose the desired bit depth. As I mentioned earlier, 8 bits is optimal, but Photoshop also prefers the 32 bit. In other software, the process is quite similar. Now let's discuss texture count. If you have numerous textures in your scene, consider lowering their resolution. My scene is simple, but imagine if you were working on a city. 8K textures could overwhelm your system. Similarly, if you're using Udemy, you'll encounter the same issue as seen with this texture. Depending on how many tiles you use, you should balance the resolution. These are the tiles for the dragon's body. I have 17 textures, and Blender processes each one separately, so it's important to be cautious. Now let's discuss this in Substance Painter. You can view all the tiles in the texture set list. Each tile is a separate texture that you can manage here. I'm in render mode using EV Next. You can check out the tutorial here to learn how to create realistic renders. I'm using the subdivision surface modifier on the model to increase the subdivisions. You can find this option here. Having a high number of levels can consume a significant amount of RAM, especially in viewport. Next is displacement. When combined with the subdivision surface, this can significantly increase memory usage. However, selecting lower values is less demanding on memory. You can watch my tutorial on displacement here. Navigate to the texture tab, where you can specify the displacement texture. It's important to use 8-bit and 4K textures for displacement, just like you would for other textures. This section is crucial, just like the topics we discussed earlier. Now let's optimize the VRAM. Open the render settings and then go to the performance section. Next, open the memory section. First is the shadow pool, enabling you to create additional shadows that utilize GPU memory. If your memory is limited, you can decrease it. The next option pertains to the light pro pool. It's advisable to set a lower value, as many users don't rely heavily on light probes. By adjusting these options, you can optimize GPU memory to some extent. Now let's move on to the next tip. 
In render mode, a considerable amount of both RAM and VRAM is utilized. When you attempt to render the scene, you may receive an out-of-memory error message. You might also encounter slow render times, particularly with cycles. First, it's important to clear as much RAM as VRAM as possible in preparation for the final render. In some situations, you might need to close and reopen Blender. Begin by switching to solid mode first. The final render process should be quicker. The next thing to do is if you are using the subdivision surface, set the viewport level to zero. This will release a substantial amount of RAM. The next suggestion is to disable the particle and hair systems in the viewport. You can disable them using the monitor icon, as both the hair and particles consume a lot of resources. Be careful not to accidentally disable them during the rendering process. Additionally, when you switch the render engine, it's a good idea to close and reopen Blender. Rapidly switching between render engines may cause Blender to crash and lead to various issues. The next is the number of vertices, as high poly models can consume a significant amount of RAM. This is particularly important if you have a large scene. Press tab. I'm currently in edit mode, and you can observe that the model is low poly. Now let's exit edit mode and enable the display of the polygon count in the screen. Enable the statistics option here. On the left side, you'll find the counts on faces, vertices, and more. The scene contains 70,000 faces or polygons. Now let's select the model. Now the first number corresponds to the selected model. Now let's compare it with a relatively high poly model. I'll switch to edit mode now. While this model is acceptable, it's important to reduce the polygon count as much as possible. Using displacement is preferable to relying on high poly models. Now let's compare the counts. The high poly version contains three times more polygons than the other model. Subdivision surface can be quite resource intensive, as mentioned earlier, so it's important to use reasonable values. Even when using displacement in the material, you may face the same issue. This is the location where you can find it. The final tips focus on optimizing for faster rendering. For instance, if you're using the compositor, make sure to enable GPU mode, which I covered in the tutorial here. If you're using cycles, be sure to choose a suitable sample value and reduce it as needed. Additionally, use the noise editor to improve the render quality rather than the high sample count. If you know additional tips, don't forget to share them in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your ideas and questions in the comments.